Welcome back to the studio. Today I'm going to be working on the trees behind the barn here and the windmill. I have already painted my sky as you can see. The blue of the sky is white plus cobalt blue. I painted the entire surface of the sky then I came back in and did my clouds. I painted the dark of the clouds first. They're my mud, which is two parts of ultramarine blue plus one part of alizarin crimson. And then I added it white into that. So that's my shadow part of the clouds. And then the lighter part of the clouds is white plus a little bit of cadmium orange and a tiny bit of ultramarine blue. Then painting forward, I painted my most distant mountains. More blue, so they will recede. And then my closer mountains are warmer. The greens in the closer mountains are uh, phthalo blue plus cadmium orange plus white and then I've also got some brush strokes of ultramarine blue plus white in there and then the lighter color down here is some of my cloud mixture um, which again is the cadmium orange ultramarine blue and white now my trees here are again some of those are more are different combinations of my Phthalo blue plus cadmium orange, I've added white in there, and then this mixture has a little bit of ultramarine blue mixed into that. And I just carefully work around my sketch of the barn. The light is coming in from the left, so the left part of the tree is going to be lighter. And this is these are just these are behind the windmill. And then I'll draw that windmill into the paint, that wet paint. Here's some, this is just ultramarine blue plus white. Yeah, and I just have the same colors but in different combinations. So it gives you different, different hues. You can, you can use just phthalo blue plus cadmium orange plus cadmium orange plus white and come up with just all sorts of different colors. If you add more orange, it's warmer, like it is there. If you add more of the blue, it's cooler, like right there. Now I'm going to come back and make this a little bit darker back here because this side is not getting as much light. And then that dark tree will accentuate the light hitting the barn. Kind of work back and forth. I'm going to use a little bit smaller brush here. This comes down behind the fountain or the behind the uh, tank there. And that's an old rock water tank that the windmill's pumping water into for the horses and cattle and other animals that are out here. A lot of ranchers, they'll you know the deer come up to the tank. I mean just. Lots of wildlife come up to those tanks. Put some of my blue in there. Okay, make a few little limbs. This is my mud plus a little bit of cadmium orange. And just, I don't want these to be real distinct because this, these trees are far, far away, so you're not going to see a whole lot. But just get a little bit in there. I'm going to clean out this brush. You'll notice I constantly am wiping my brushes out. The secret to nice, crisp, clean color on your canvas is a clean brush. So I'm constantly wiping my brushes. I am going to bring a little bit more light right here because I'm going to, that'll help accentuate that corner of the, the barn there. Now, I have not painted that area behind my windmill because I'm going to do it now. Get my brush that I'm looking for. This is, I, I originally sketched an oval there, which will be for the blades of the windmill. And I'm not going to go all the way right up. I'm going to leave some of that sketch showing so that I can see for my 
Put some of my cloud color back in here. Just want to leave enough of my sketch there that I can kind of see what's happening and follow it. In the center of the windmill of those blades comes up here and there's a, a central disc here where the motor is and that goes out to the fan out there. And these blades And there's going to be a little, the blades don't come all the way to that, the, the wider portion of the blades don't come all the way to that central disc. So I want to leave some of the sky color around that. And now this is a mixture of my mud plus liquid. And I'm resting my hand on the mall stick. This mall stick is, I've, if you've watched my videos a lot, I show this occasionally. This is a hook that's made for lifting clothes off of a tall clothes rack in a store. But we found these at Container Store, and they are, it's just perfect for a mall stick. The minute Jack saw it, he said, oh my word, that is absolutely perfect. And so that's what we... That's what I use. I just took it over the top of my easel and then I can rest my hand on here to steady my hand as I do this fine detail. Texas windmills and barns, you, you see a lot of them in Texas. When I first moved to Texas, I really, it was funny, I got a job here out of medical school. And I don't know how many of you have seen the movie called Giant with Rock Hudson and Elizabeth Taylor. But it was out in West Texas, desolate. No trees, nothing. And so when I got the job in San Antonio, when I first came here, that's what I thought I was coming to. I was so very, very surprised when there were trees here and beautiful hills and oh my gosh. And I came in January and it was cold and they had an exceptionally wet winter. I mean, just rainy, rainy. I'd grown up in Florida in the Sunshine State. You know, I was beginning to think I had made a huge mistake coming to Texas. Everybody kept telling me, Mickey, just wait until spring. Wait until spring and you are just going to be, love it here. Well, they were right. The Texas spring was absolutely gorgeous. The wildflowers, oh my word. And we're just beginning spring here. It's, I just love the blue bonnets and the mountain laurels. and So this painting is really fun for me to do because I get to celebrate our Texas spring. Now, I could come back. I've made those some of those not quite right, so I come back. I've saved my sky color. I can come back in and just reshape what I need to reshape. But I just, this is my, again, this is my mud plus a little bit of liquid and I can just, makes it very easy, I can pull that into the wet paint of the sky and it makes it very easy to, to make these lines smooth. If I were to try to paint this over the sky after it has dried, the, the lines would just be lumpy and bumpy and would not look very good. So here I'm going to paint. Again, I left my sketch exposed so that I would be able to use that to, to refer to as I painted. But now I'm coming back and I'm adding some of my sky color in here. Actually, I have that platform just a little bit low, so I'm going to paint that out. And my sketch was done with mud plus liquid. Again, the mud is two parts of ultramarine blue, one part of alizarin crimson. And that just makes a nice purple. And I mix that with liquid to make a thin oil wash. And that's what I sketch up my painting in in the very beginning. 
and that I allow that to dry overnight before I before I begin painting, and then then my sketch is there. So if I need to go back and uh, scrape some paint off or something, I still have my sketch there. So let me go ahead now, and I'll draw the base of that windmill in. Again, the, the platform. Now this is. What I'm going to do here, in order to get my line straight for the windmill, that, that's actually the pipe that the water, it drives, the windmill drives the pump, and that pipe is actually comes down to the pump that then's underground, and that pumps the water for the well. But the windmill drives that. I'm taking a T-square, I hook it on the top edge of my canvas, and I have to be careful that this does not touch the painting. But I can use this then to make that line straight. I just brace my brush against that, take my line all the way down. So that's that gives me a straight line. Now I can come back and do the little side side parts of this. It's the platform. And I can just drag that into the wet paint of the tree. Again, that makes my lines nice and smooth. That one I didn't get quite right. I pulled it over just a little bit too much. Should come out more, so I can just take my tree color, kind of erase that. A little more light right here. There we go. Now I can redraw that line. Oil paint is very forgiving. I, watercolor, you have to be, man, you've got to be exact. You can't erase or. There we go. And I got a little misstep up here that I can just paint out. I saved my sky colors and all that so that I can go back and make any corrections I need to. This is our windmill, and there's support pieces, and then I'm going to use a little smaller brush, and there's cross pieces in that. I'm not, it, if these get a little faint, that's fine, because this is a long way away. I mean, this... We just are given the impression of this windmill back here. We don't want super detailed. Detail comes forward, less detailed areas go back. So we don't want this just real prominent. We want it to be there, but not to jump forward. So there's our windmill. Now, to make the vein, this, this comes back out from here. Straight, and then actually there's usually a couple of pieces that come out like so. And the vein on this one's going to be red. But since it's far away, I'm going to mute that red. I'm using alizarin crimson plus a little bit of mud plus some white. And there's the vein on my windmill. Actually, that's a little bit bigger than it should be. So I can come back with my sky color. Again, I clean my brush each time because when I pull that blue over the red, it, my brush picks up some of the red, so I have to wipe my brush out. And I'm pulling into that red. I don't want to pull, I don't want to pull from the red out into the sky because it'll pull red into my sky, dirty my sky color. Now let's reshape that end.
And there we go. There's our windmill and our little trees behind it. And I thank you so much for watching my YouTube videos. Please subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to see the complete step-by-step -step process of this painting, as well as others I do, please visit my blog. The link is in the description below. It's also on the final frame of my YouTube video. And on my blog, you'll see the entire painting. I show a lot of the steps there that I don't do videos on. So please visit my blog. You can also subscribe to it. So I appreciate again you watching, and you have a wonderful, wonderful day.